Welcome back, everybody. Kathy Arbor here. I'm just setting my exposure a little bit. There we go. I think that'll do. So I hope you're all having a great day. And you're ready to do some painting with me. Um, there is a traceable. This is a traceable. Um, it is available for all members on Patreon and a YouTube um, membership. And there's links down below. And, or if you see the little join button underneath the screen, that'll also bring you to um, the YouTube membership. So I thought, well, July is usually a very lazy summer relax type of month. Most people get into the um, vacation mode. Around. That's, I would say, the most popular time for a lot of people to take summer vacation is usually July. And so I thought, well, what, what do you do on your vacation? Are you somebody that likes to do a lot of um, sightseeing, or are you someone that just likes to relax? Hey, Carol. I like to relax and um, read a book or sit by a pool if I'm by a pool. Or you can use this for any background. So I'm going to put mine in a field of daisies. So she's just laying there in a field of daisies without a care in the world, <laughs> just reading her book. And uh, daisies, because that's what's in bloom right now here, are tons and tons of different types of daisies. So I've already prepped my, this is just a plain old file folder that I've prepped with some gesso. And that's just the latex. You can use whatever brand you have. If you don't have gesso, you can also use a white acrylic paint. Um, preferably craft paint if you have it. If you don't, um, you can just water down your um, uh, artist grade, but don't water it past 30% because then you tend to lose the, um, the binder ability. So, if you were with me on Tuesday, I had a little haul. <laughs> Got some more um, different types of gouache. I really want to start using gouache with my watercolor. Because it's kind of a happy medium in between um, watercolor and acrylics. Uh, and you can get acrylic gouache, but the way I look at that is you may as well just use craft paint. Same thing, but a whole lot less expensive. <laughs> hey, Janet. So, and I'm all frugal. I, I, if I can save a buck, I'm going to save a buck. <laughs> so, um, I did do a little experiment to show you that there was absolutely no difference from craft paint and uh, acrylic gouache. So, if you can find um, craft paint at a reasonable price, I would strongly suggest using that instead of an acrylic gouache because the acrylic gouache is crazy expensive, um, especially in your more popular brands like Winsor Newton and um, Holbein, Daniel Smith, that type of thing. Now there are um, what they call jelly gouaches that you can get. They're not too bad price. They're, they're fairly reasonable. The only thing I don't like about them is that they dry up and then they're very hard to reconstitute. Um, now, if they're acrylic, you can't. It, they're done. So um, here in Canada, we have a, a Dessars, it's called Art Store, and they have their own brand of um, gouache. And that's what I'm getting because it's even cheaper than the craft paint. And it's just as good. Um, hey, Dot, hope you're doing well, and 
hope things are cooling down a little for you. Oh, yes, you got the book. What was it the journal or something? I can't remember. Awesome. Yeah, it's another hot day here. We had a pretty good storm last night. Thank goodness we had rain because it's been, oh gosh, almost eight weeks that we haven't had rain here. We got a really good downpour last night, wet everything, So, but we still could use more. Uh, looks like we'll be getting a little bit more on Sunday, but it's hot again crazy hot. And here where I am in uh, Ontario, Canada, we get a lot of humidity here. So when it says 24 Celsius, it feels like 34. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's horrible. It's no fun being outside. So I don't go out and do gardening or anything because it just, it just wipes you right out. So I thought, well, let's put this girl in a field of wildflowers or daisies. I'm going to use daisies. I might put a few odd other wildflowers in there, like, I don't know, buttercup or uh, maybe some grasses. So what I typically do is I'll put on my background first because she's going to be laying in a field of daisies. So we're going to... This is going to be very loose. It's not going to be a very detailed thing. It's going to be a kind of um, impressionistic, I guess you could say. So I'm going to want some greens, um, yellow, white. I want a fairly dark green. So if you have, um, there's a craft paint called black green that's a really good one or you can get a little bit of black with um uh hooker's green just something dark or even a plantation green or a sap green will do something fairly dark okay there's black green and we have some black I'm just getting some greens here and a cadmium yellow or a pale cadmium yellow will do also or a medium yellow maybe a cream or a buff color so I got uh, this one is butter cream medium yellow black green black and there's a sap green and I'll need white of course or a warm white even a little bit of that left and maybe we'll use it up it's a warm white so it's not quite white white that's a good one. Um, I think that's it for now for our background. Yeah, stuff gets to the UK really fast. I'm really surprised. Every time I send her something, she gets it before it goes to the United States. <laughs> People in the United States, it's got to be like... 10, 14 days in the United to get to someone in the US, where it only takes like five to seven days to get to the UK. Crazy. So let's put this aside for now. Have my water beside me. Um, is that is the camera view good for you guys? I'm 
here. Um, all right. Now, do I want blue sky? Well, being that she's laying in a meadow, you probably wouldn't see the sky. Maybe you'll see a bush area in the back. So we can do that. Or maybe she's under a tree. We could put some tree leaves just at the top. That might be a good idea. So I'm just going to put out some of these colors. So I'm definitely going to use some yellow and my sap green, my, my warm white, and a little bit of black. shaking these up. This one kind of sounds yucky. I might end up using that other one. I don't know if this one's any good. Kind of sounds chunky. Once they start to go chunky, you know, that's pretty much the end of their life. Because these don't last forever, so use up what you have. Yeah, isn't the, it's crazy the price of postage. Absolutely crazy. Some green here. Oh, that one's all dried out. Let's try that one. <laughs> I can I use quite a bit of green, so this one's kind of got chunks in it too. It's a good thing I'm using. I might have to do some jelly printing. Use some of this up. And some warm white. This is just coffee lids that I use or um, fast food containers, the lids, the plastic lids, I like using them. I do have a wet palette, but I usually use that when I'm doing a large canvas, because then I like to, I don't do it in one session, so I like to leave my paint. Um, what else? Black. I thought I got black green out. Yeah, I did. It's a little different. All right. So this is going to be very loose, like I said. Um, I'm going to put just a little bit of, maybe I should put a little brown in. Van Dyke brown, nice dark brown. I can always lighten it. If you're um, thinking of getting some craft paint, get your primary colors. So primary blue or cayenne blue or an ultramarine blue, a yellow, cadmium yellow, um, white, um, raw umber, or burnt umber, sienna, because you'll use those a lot. And I'm going to use a fairly big brush. Let's see, where did I put that? Just checking for my brush. Put it away somewhere. Hmm. I don't see it. 
well, I'll use this one, I guess. So I want darker up here. So mm, she's going to be sitting kind of like that. So I want probably the, um, the darkness up here to about here and then the field down here. So this will be the kind of the brush area or the woods or whatever you want to. And I'm just going to mix my colors with my brush on the palette. So there's going to be some darks, going to be some lights, but I want it fairly dark. You can, um, leave your brush marks because they look kind of cool, especially in this type of style of painting. Um, it's impressionistic, so you kind of know what it is, but there's not enough detail to say definitely. Um, and then I'm going to start going into the yellows and greens, more of a lighter color. As I go down, maybe it gets a little bit lighter, maybe a little more brown in there. Uh, I'm not too worried about the center because that's where she will be laying. So maybe put a little bit more this color in. If you don't like it after you've put the paint on, just go back over it with some other colors until you get it to the way you want. Um, I don't really worry because there's going to be a lot of layers. Um, and I'm thinking about the under layers first as far as the background's concerned. Because I know I'm going to be putting a lot of um, color on top of here. So the field daisies are going to be in here. So there's going to be some more green on top of this and white. Get a paper towel. Now you could make this as her laying on a beach too. That would be cool. So you can do all kinds of stuff with this um, traceable. Put her wherever you want. You could have her laying on a chair or on a bed or. Z said she would do a live stream, but hasn't so far. Yeah, she'll, she'll post it. All right, so now I want to dry this. So get my heat gun out. going to be quite a few layers on this so you want to make sure you draw your layers fairly well. I hope they're having fun over there and it's not too hot. I know they'll have air conditioning, but I think one of the things they like to do is to go on a little excursion to the art shops around town. 
but if it's really hot, they may not do that. I wonder if they have a pool where they are. <laughs> That's where I would be already. <laughs> But I guess they wouldn't be allowed there with art supplies. But you could sketch. Can't see why you couldn't lay there and sketch. Queen's Ink, I would so love to go there. Yeah, I'd love to go anywhere. Dick Blick. We just don't have hardly any art stores here. You have to drive like three, four hours to get to an art store, one way. All right, now, I'm thinking about this area here. Um, because I'm going to be putting her in there, I might want to put a bit of background just in this area here because she will be sitting here. So instead of having to kind of paint through the arm and around the book, it might be easier just to put a few things just in this area here where her arm would be in that type of thing. So I'm going to be using a um, script brush for some stems. Now you could also use uh, a credit card or um, a stick if you like that. Um, it's fun doing that because sometimes uh, plants grow fairly rigid. They don't have any kind of bend to them and or or little bushes that are in the field um, tend to be a little straighter jagged looking it's hard to describe uh, let's see if i got a do i have a pencil here or a palette knife let's see i got this palette knife here so I'm going to mix up a little bit of green and I want it to be a little darker than this background. So let's mix some of this. You want a fair amount. If you're going to use a palette knife, you want to be able to load that palette knife. I'm going to put a little of this black green in there. because I want it to be strong enough to show against this background. Then you can just load your, and let's see. It's fun just to try different things too. It doesn't have to be all precise. This is very impressionistic. So it's the suggestive mark, I guess you could say it. But you can go in too with your liners. You just have to make sure you have the right consistency for your liner and you hold the liner at the top and that way you get a that's not quite get watery enough that way you get a little more of a natural and you just skim the top Skim that, that way you get all kinds of different sizes. Just 
can also go in oval um, motion. And that way you're, um, you kind of have a little bit of a curve on the end. Now some of them will have broken, so you can put some broken ones in there. Some will be laying across. They're not all standing up like soldiers. So remember that some are smaller. Um, down on the bottom here, they'll be a little thicker because that's where you're viewing it. I'm just going to put a few more in here, up at the top here. A little bit. Okay. All right. Now few daisies in now with this I uh, in the background here or in the, the far part of this the daisies would be very small you wouldn't see them that much so it's kind of nice to get a little um, if you have a mop brush or something that's going to be that you could flick and we're going to Wet the brush. Get this white here. We might need some more. I want white, white. I want green. Green on my brush. And then I'm just going to add, you know what, some thicker ones. So let's put some thicker ones in there. So a little more paint. I think I need a thinner brush. Let's dab it, see what we get. Eh, that'll work. Okay. that brush out and I'm going to dry it now. So you've been to the queen sink before. Awesome. So now we can put this on. So I'm going to get some um, Sorel uh, transfer paper. And let's see. I think this will work.
have the gray one here. Hopefully this will be dark enough. We will see. And I want her to be about there, I guess. Like that. And then I'm just going to tape the edge so just in case it gets moved, I can just easily place it back in place so it's not a horrible <laughs> ordeal of getting it all back in the right spot. All right, and we want a pen. I like using a pen of a different color usually. I can find one here. Let's put some of these away. Ballpoint pen. And that way you can see where you've been. Oh, that one's not working anymore. Uh, I have to get one out. Just a minute. Another. Good. All right, and then I just trace around. Now, if you notice the arms are really dark in here, that's going to be the shadow area. And I put that in so it's a little easier for you guys to see where the shadow goes. So the book. the book and see if it it's coming through or not. Yeah, I can see it. That's the darker area, so it's a little hard to see, but I know where it is. So it should be good. Like I said, the um, traceable is um, available to all my members on Patreon and YouTube membership. And you can find the link for the downloadable in the community page for YouTube members and on the Patreon site on Patreon. And thank you so much for being members. That's what keeps me going. I love to teach and know that you're interested in learning. So when you become members, that helps me get new stuff to to show you and to teach you with. And it's also nice to know that you're interested. Keeps me arting, I guess.
So I don't know how much of this I would do if I wasn't on YouTube. Um, I'd probably be still sketching and stuff, but as far as doing all these paintings, probably not. Um, part of her shoulder there. Uh, her hands there, I got that. This kind of looks funny because it's the way she's holding the book. You know how you kind of put your your fingers and your thumb on the page to hold it in place. That's kind of what I was it's kind of wonky, but it's not bad. <laughs> Uh, the hair, it's her center point. You can put whatever hair color you want on. There are some highlights that'll be um, put in when we paint. That's just um, folds in her, kind of hard to see, but folds in her um, shorts or jeans, whatever you want to put on it. Now this could be shorts because this here could be the end or, and then that's her knee, her flesh. Or you could make the whole thing um, jeans if you wanted to. <clears throat> hey, Lena. Uh, so glad you are still, you still are holding strong in the heat. It was sticky hot today. Well, it's hot there too, Lena. Too bad that the heat doesn't make your body melt. <laughs> so <that's, laughs> I know, right? How is that? <laughs> I know that's funny all right so there's the I don't know if you can see you probably can't see it too much but um, I could probably mark it a little darker with a pencil you can see it. Let's see. So there's her the hair. Because this will be covered anyway, so it's not going to hurt anything to put it in darker. So there's her hair. Um, her shoulder comes around like this. She's got um, kind of rolled up sleeves and then she's uh, laying on either a rolled up pillow or a rolled up um, towel whatever you want to make it this is why it's kind of cool you can put her in a beach on a bed wherever you want doesn't have to be in a field so there's her sleeve and her arm goes up like this. There's her thumb. Like that. And that's the book. Her fingers. That's the book. Like 
that. And there's your thumb. That and like that. There's the other part of her leg. And this here is where her leg is. This goes up there. Can you see that or not? All right. So for her, I'm going to probably keep her in jeans, probably. And... We'll make her um, brown hair. So we'll need some blue and get another palette out. So I have some primary blue, even though Jean color is a little darker, I'll show you how you can gray it down. make that if you have colors already that you want to use use them but if you don't have all the colors it's good to learn how to mix your own with what you have so I think we'll put let me think Maybe we'll have her with a mottled colored shirt. Nothing that can you can distinguish a pattern because that makes it a little more difficult. Uh, I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you. So maybe, well, we can use the green and yellow and blue together and give her blue pants brown hair and maybe just a neutral pillow here and then her book of course will kind of be a cream color i think that's it so i'm just going to use um, these plaid this is a number 12 flat. Very inexpensive. They're great brushes. I like them. Um, and I'm just going to put in my base colors. So the hair, uh, I'm going to have probably have some brown out here that I used. So I'm going to use that. Now I can change it up a little bit by adding. Um, either some yellow to it or you could add a little bit of red if you wanted to lighten it with some white whatever you, color you want to give her so i just added some some yellow and that should be so i'm just gonna basically Color her hair one shade for now. And then we'll put all the highlights and other shadows in on top of this. So I'm not too worried about brush marks because I'll be going over top of this again. Okay. Hi, dear. Okay, so her her jeans. I'm going to make a fairly dark color because we're going to have a lot, quite a bit of um, 
shading in it. So most of that is going to be dark. So I have this primary blue here, and I'm going to mix some black with it. I want it fairly dark. If you have a real dark navy blue, you can use that. And we're going to just base coat in that color. Now her, the way she's positioned, the way I, I want it is that um, the sun is kind of up top, but she's sitting under a tree. So her top and her, this part of her legs will be kind of in shadow. So you're not going to really see a lot of defined shapes, like her legs, where her top starts. Uh, matter of fact, I could um, just put in all the way into her shirt. And then we'll just divide it by, when we do this shirt, we'll put in some different colors. So don't um, cover up her arms though, because they're kind of rolled up. Yeah, and this is just a base coat that we're doing. This is her other shoulder. Can you see enough or do you want me to um, come in closer? Let me know. Now I have my reference beside me, so I'm not worried about covering any of those um, reference lines because I can look at my um, pattern and either draw them back in or just put them in when I, I can see them. So this is the other part of the jeans. Paint around the. No, yeah. I'm going to have her in shorts, jean shorts, so you'll see her the top of her knee in this one. Yeah, you can make yours uh, with jeans on instead if you want. Trying to use the side of my. <clears throat> okay, I think that's it for that. Is this too dark? I wonder. Maybe you should lighten it a little bit. All right, now her skin tone, we're, we're going to use the, a medium color. So uh, I have some skin tones in my uh, craft paint, so I'm going to use those. Um, you can make your skin tone whatever color you want. And so I have the uh, medium flesh here. Back neighbor came over. I had to bring my... Oh, cool. 
showing it off. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna get a smaller brush, smaller area. Let's see. I guess I could use this. This is a number uh, four round. And then I'm just going to base coat in her arms. And we'll put the highlights, the shadows in later. Trying to see where the edge is. Right there. It's for some. Yeah. You might need a couple coats when doing this part because you don't want to see the green through it or whatever color you're doing. I think I'll put her under a tree, too. Which would be kind of cool. Maybe she's the lucky one that doesn't have the scorching hot weather. She's able to lay in the field without getting scorched. <laughs> It's got a little bit of blue in there because I didn't dry it enough. I'll oh, just bring it back up there. But, and then we have the book. And the book can be um, kind of a buttermilk color or light grayish color would do. So I'll just put some of this buttermilk out.
Hey, Dylan. There's a traceable for you if you're interested in doing this one. could put her anywhere you want on a beach on on a chair on a bed floor wherever you want it's just the uh, traceable is just her not the uh, background because that way I thought it'd be easier to change her up if you wanted to Whatever your lazy day of summer, what would you be doing? Where would you be? Outside or inside? At the beach? Clean the edges up here with a smaller brush. Inside with a good book. Can't risk getting bitten. Inside. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. Okay, so um, her pillow. Let's make that. Ooh, gray maybe I don't want to get into another color because then it gets distracting as far as um, the way your eye follows around the page so we'll take a little bit of that black that I had here we'll mix it with this white and we'll use this I'm just going to use the gray. And we'll 
and put some highlights on it and some shadows. go now let's dry that now hi Carol have a good day Now, let's do a little bit of let's do the shirt. So, I'm going to make uh, just a random marks, basically. And I think I'll use probably some green green and yellow and a little bit of white. So different colors of green. I'm going to take some of this also just to lighten it. So I have a mix of different shades of green. And now I, I want it kind of a watery, so I don't want a definite mark. You could actually use um, a very small stencil if you, or even jelly paper would be cool. You know, um, certain patterns or whatever. This will be take some yellow. Some white, more white. And I'm just going to very, very gingerly just put a few marks in the sleeve. Not much, just a few, more or less on the um, using the side or the uh, chiseled edge of my brush. Because I don't want, because it's going to um, have to show that her sleeves are rolled up so it wouldn't you wouldn't see the full pattern of whatever her shirt is so you kind of have to give that impression so that should be good enough now her shirt does go down in here but 
that's going to be really dark. So I'm going to actually make this even darker right in here because it's very shadowed. And then I'm just going to sweep it up into the leg here. So you can't really distinguish where the legs meet. Very dark. Same with right along the edge of the hand here and under the book. I want it fairly dark. And um, I'm going to put a couple marks like that where there might be some folds in the fabric on the side here darker and then underneath here where her shoulders are hitting the pillow would be darker so just go back over that with kind of a watered down mix of that whatever um, dark blue you have. Well, it's not quite dry enough. I'm going to let that dry a bit. Um, I'm going to take some um, that blue color you have here. You take that on your palette. And mix some white with it or, or cream. Make a lighter color of that blue. Let's see, some white. I'm going to mix a little bit of blue with it. That's kind of greenish. So it's a lighter color of blue. And then dry brush. So the highlight would be coming across her. And just dry brush. So you want to see those streaks. Let's dry that so I can finish the um, arms. Alright, so I want to put kind of a glaze on there just to darken underneath. So that dark blue color again. And just go right over top of that area that we did with a bit of a glaze. 
You have enough water on your brush too. But you still want to see a bit of that. So you just kind of um, toning it down. All right, and then we can lighten this blue again with more white. So it's fairly light. Take most of it off your brush. And then now we can just Do a little bit more in the center where that light would be hitting. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to, I don't want to see real defined brush marks, so I'm going to take the dark color again. Just go over that. Cover it a bit. Just on the side there. Just go back and forth till you like what you got. Thanks, Lena. All right. So the book, I'm not going to put any writing. If you want to put writing on there, you can. But I'm going to um, put some highlights. So the highlight, I want a really strong, This I want to get rid of any of the um, background showing through on the top here. Because that's where the, the sun or the light source would be hitting the book. So you do want that to be a fairly uh, opaque. And then we'll come back and put some really bright white. And just a little bit on the and I'm gonna take a little white a little bit of that buttermilk color I don't want it true white white and I'm gonna go across there again that I'd have to put a couple coat on coats on, but and down this side just a little bit. And maybe on the corner of the page here. Like that. Across the bottom. And now I can take um, a little bit more of that white with this blue that we had on the jeans for the highlight. You can mix a little bit more of that, but even lighter. Now I want you to just kind of sweep it across the top a little bit and down the spine or the the ditch, whatever you want to call it, of the book. And 
and then across the bottom a little bit like that. It's kind of a layering process. So let that dry. Now the, um, let's see. I'm going to take this flesh color and some brown. Let's see if I can make a reasonable. Yeah, that should do. Brown and that flesh color. I want to make um, kind of a darker shade for shading. Uh, I think I need some red. Let's see. There's candy. Let's try this one. We're a little bit more on the red side. This should do. Let's try that again. Some of this and some of this. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to take my smaller brush. I'm going to put a little bit more in that. Now I'm going to define the um, areas where there would be shade. So along the hand here, there would be shade in there. And then you could kind of go around the thumb. while it's wet you can blend that in with your brush a little bit So that go across the fingers. Up the finger a little bit. I'm just taking whatever I have on here. Like that. And down the wrist. And a that out. I don't want it too thick. We can um, co come back with more later, but this will be our initial shaded areas. And we can also come in with colored pencils if you want. It doesn't have to be just acrylic. Now on this one, I'll put some on the top of her hand, just going across the top a little bit. And when you get to the wrist, kind of bring it up like a Y or a V into the thumb. And then the, this is um, very shadowed. It's kind of the uh, 
you're seeing the in when your hands cupped, but we're not going to put all the uh, fingers in. This is an impressionistic way of doing it. It's more suggestive. Just take some water on your brush while it's wet. And then on her knee, let's see, maybe it wouldn't be a lot more, it'll be more. Um, Highlight, really? There'd be a little bit, not much. Could actually put more on our knee here of the natural color. Um. We can take a little bit of that buttermilk color with some of that natural tone and lighten it up again, and make it a little lighter. And then you can um, add a little bit of highlight. So a little bit on the thumb here. Not a lot, but and on the finger top of the finger here and add a little bit on the wrist top of the thumb maybe a little bit on the finger here wrist and top of the knee be a little bit lighter so you can let that dry and if you don't like the um, it's not blended a look you could always go back in and do glazes over top. Yeah, right, Dot. <laughs> uh, so let's put a little bit of that grayish color. And I'm just gonna like that. But I don't want it, I want it a little looser. I don't think I want that there. So while it's wet, you can still play with it. You can make it darker in areas if you want. You could scribble stuff on it too. Take some out while it's wet. Maybe those are the paragraphs. You can see the paper through it. And 
I'm just going to put a little bit on the end of my brush. I want as much of the water out of my brush because I want a dry brush now. So and go down. This is kind of the page that's the side of the book. I think I want a little bit more in there. We can go back in with colored pencil too. So let's dry that. Okay, well, now let's do um, some of her hair. So I'm going to give her um, the top part of her hair. The sun would be coming in here. So I'm going to make it uh, a little bit. Very light. It's almost. And where the part in, her, in the top of her hair, you want to leave a dark area. So this is when your brush marks matter. I think how the hair would be falling. So I want some really dark. So I'm going to put a little bit of black with that brown that I had. And I'm just going to brush it up into the crown of the head. So I want it fairly dark on the bottom here. It would be the darkest part. So I'm paying attention to how these strokes would be so that it um, represents the, the way that hair is falling. And you'd have uh, areas where it'd be a little darker, um, thicker. 
So in here, we'd have a little bit of that in the center. Actually. Dark brown now. Okay, a little bit. Maybe one more. A little more um, bright up here. And some more of that brown. So it's just the back and forth until you get it the way you want. Okay, we'll let that dry. Now the um, cushion she's laying on, it could also have a little bit of a highlight. So we'll just um, use some of the same color of, of gray here, but lighten it. And we would probably see a little bit. along the top part. Like that. And you can darken the bottom area with that black and a little of the gray. Just make it darker. And then just darken that along the bottom. And probably right in here too, along her head would be darker, her shoulder. Kind of it. I don't know why they're barking. All right, so we'll dry that.
look at, I got to see what they're barking at. Sorry. God forbid there be a neighbor outside. That's not allowed. Crazy dogs. All right, let's get back at this. So we want, she looks like she's kind of floating because we don't have any dark colors down here. So we're gonna put some more of the dark green. And this time I'm gonna stipple a little bit. So I have this here. And I'm gonna stipple. And you can brush and stipple. I want browns and greens. So it would be fairly dark in here. We're going to also put more flowers in here. So Okay, now before it gets dry, I'm just going to take my brush and move some of that. Kind of make a wash out of it. You can actually have it so that it goes up under here. We'll make this darker too because it would be fairly dark under there. You don't want um, recognizable brush strokes per se in this part. This is the ground. And we're going to be putting more over top of it. So, but you'll still see some of it. So you don't want um, something you could say that's a brush mark. Okay, so let's try that. Hi, Jasper. So I'm going to take a little more of that green color. I've got a fair amount of water on my um, brush here. I'm just going to go under and darken this up. So it would be fairly dark under here. Let's even put a little black green in there. Just add a little of that here and there, just so that it doesn't look like that was purposely just put there. A little more green there. 
is uh, black green. So it would be very dark under there. Because that's where her pillow is. So the, there would be no light. Thanks, Jasper. All right. Um, I'm going to make this the book page a little darker. I think it's too light. So um, I'm going to make it a little bit on the gray side, I think. And this is watery. I'm, I'm making this fairly watery. So I want the page on the top, like the book thickness to show as the brightest part. So I need this to be darker. That's better. And this could be darker here. Where the spine is. That's better. Now we can add some more of the plant material. So I'm going to do the green and I want a fairly um, watery consistency because I don't want to skip. And this time I'm going to go right over top. Of her. She's in a field. Sorry guys, these dogs are driving me nuts. I don't know what they're barking at, but there's nothing out there. Now when you can add a little bit of different shades of green because there would be different shades in it. And there'd be leaves. grasses and whatnot. So you can add different colors. God, you'd swear they were 
you hear them? Okay. Put a few in there. Now some of these are going to be daisies, so they would have a little bit of a thicker stem. These need to be <laughs> thanks, Devin. All right, so then we can put. where you want your daisies so um, you got to remember how you're looking at this so you're almost looking through the daisies and weeds so you're at the bottom level so you're not looking on top anymore which means you're not necessarily going to be seeing the tops of the flowers. You're going to see the underside of the flowers. So you're, unless they're really low. So I'm going to put a few, let's see. I want them to be a fairly dark because they would be shaded because they're on the underside of the flower. Sorry, guys. So we'll have, um, let's see. And depending on, you know, um, you would see more at a certain level, too. So it'd be more foliage on the bottom, and then the flowers would start up here. So you would get more... Um, leaves that type of thing so depending on how how detailed you want to get so i'm just going to put uh a few little dabs of um leaves in here and these are going to be more or less a generic leaf it's not going to be what typically would be that species leaf. Um, uh, you can put um, grasses in too if you wanted to. Um, all kinds of stuff. So just have fun with it. So a few leaves here and there. I'm kind of mixing my um, greens up too. So you have a variety on the leaf. And sometimes you need to do that anyways because it won't show up in parts of this. So um, You know, you can put in as many or as few as you want. Just make sure you mem remember there is depth to these, though. So you might want to put a little, a few more um, smaller ones in here. And, and some that are crossing, because they, they won't be all um, standing straight up. They cross each other. No, 
thanks, Lena. Yeah, you can paint just about anything you eat too. <laughs> it's just fun to experiment, see, see um, what you can do. That's what I love about painting, especially acrylic painting. Because there's, you can just go back over it if it didn't work out. Okay, so where do I want um, daisies? So we can have uh, the daisies that are just starting to come out. So they're kind of um, in a bunch folded up. They're not really long. So we could put a, a few of those in these areas where... Um, And I'm just brushing a few strokes in a V shape. And then I can go and attach them to the stem later. So I'm not too worried about uh, if it's correct or not. Let's make a bigger one here. So um, maybe this one's open. So we would see something like that. We'll put another one. I don't want to put them too far down. This one might be able to, I guess we could put one here. So. This one a big one too. So I'm not really being too worried about the shape. It's, it's a kind of a generic shape actually. I put a few more buds in here and there. Sometimes um, daisies will have a few buds on the bottom part. As they grow, they open up. So let's put a bigger one in here, I guess. Bud there. And I think we need to do some in here. So let's put a few. I don't want to put too many in though. You want you kind of want to overlap things too because they're not evenly spaced. So um, you wouldn't see you might want to cluster sometimes they would be um, especially in the wild there would be clusters of Maybe a bunch of them in one area. And that looks um, more natural than just having them evenly spaced around the page. Let's see. Maybe we can put one in here. Okay. Um, let's see. I want some bigger 
drops back here, I think. Or I could just... So back in here, where the... Um... It's further away, so you're only seeing dabs. You might want to um, concentrate them more in one area, like don't go up and down. It's kind of like when you're doing hair. You'll see them more concentrated on a horizon line. Um, further away, basically. And that You can do that with your um, stems too, like... You could put a few more darker stems in here. Oops, should have waited. Wait till that color's done. So let's try that. to make her the top of her hair a little more I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, red probably or gold mm, maybe gold uh, just a, a bit of um, glaze. Looking a little bit on the gray side. I don't want her to be gray. Nothing wrong with gray. I'm gray, but. Just a little bit. Blondish. Highlight. Like that. There. All right. Now I can go back and put more a brighter white on top of that after it's dry. Um, now we could put her under a tree simply by just adding some random leaves on the very top here. So they would be I want fairly thick paint and I want them lighter. And basically, I'm 
looking. Um, let's see. We'll try it. If we don't like it, we can just paint over it. But there's no reason why not to try it. some lighter ones in there because it's uh, sun shining through and then you can just take some dark brown add some um, white to it make some stems if you want and just connect a few here and there Put a few in there, down there, doesn't have to be a lot, just to show that there's stems there, all right. And let me think, let's fix up her skin a little bit. So, just to even out her skin, play with the same colors. This time a little bit on the watery side. Not the best at this. I prefer colored pencils, you know. <laughs> but it's always good to try something that you're struggling with. So I haven't done portraits in a long time in acrylic. White. Over her thumb, for the knee, be lighter. And a little bit darker in the hand here. And here. Normally I would use colored pencil for this part.
And I think that's good. I'm getting picky. All right, so what else could we do? If you want to, you could have put a butterfly in here. Let's do a little bit of just these dark um, undersides of the, they would have this. Little thing there. Any of these needed? Ending two. We'll see the undersides of these, so we might need a few here and there to show that. That's good. So I'm not having any of the face of the inside of the flower showing because you're not seeing that because you're kind of looking up into it. So you could write some stuff on the book or whatever. You want. How, depends on how much detail you want to get into. Um, I think I'm going to leave this one as is. Uh, what a p oh thanks is it Ari a ladybug yeah you could put a little ladybug on there all kinds of stuff. You could put something in here. Whatever you want. So I hope you'll give it a try at least. As I said, the um, traceable, which is this, is for all the members. So you don't have to have her in a field. You could have her on the beach. This could be the top part of a chair or a lounge or a Chesterfield. You could have her on a blanket, in a hammock, whatever you want. So that's why I just did the, the body and not everything else. So have fun with that. And you could add, I don't know, butterflies, a cat, dog, whatever you want. So I hope you enjoyed it, and um, if you do do it, I'd love to see it. You can get on uh, Instagram. It's Kathy Arbor on Instagram, and you can tag me. Um, I think it's Paint with Kathy Arbor, and then, uh, then I'll be able to see it. So I be best be going, and um, yeah, today's Thursday. Oh, wow. And we'll see you next Tuesday. And what's the date today? Actually, I may put up the members uh, video 
this weekend. We'll see how um, things go. And we'll see you next Tuesday. All right. Thanks for coming, everyone. And uh, have a fantastic, safe weekend. Bye for now.